guys, Jennifer here with Blood Rock Media. I am here with Blind Locomotive. Yeah! Can you guys introduce yourselves? I guess I'll start with me. You're first, dude. Alright, yeah. I'll go first. I'm Ben, I'm the singer. I'm Brian, the bassist. I'm Phil, I'm the guitarist. Ian on the drums. Woo! Sweet, Chris. And we are here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Bowling Green, Sorry, Kentucky. Uh -huh. Is this where all you guys are? You all are from? Yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. Uh, pretty much, man. Pretty much within yeah. a 20 mile radius has been my stomping ground. Yeah, I was born here. Born so uh, I went to Glasgow uh, for the longest time, but Bowling Green is definitely my home now. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, man. Definitely a noteworthy town here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I saw that you have a couple of shows coming up out here. Talk yeah. about that. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Phil. What do we got uh, as far as what you've been working on? We've got, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to have one at the Spillway, uh, June 3rd. It's on a Saturday. Uh, opening band's going to be a local <coughs> band at the Costco, uh, Wolf Island Cosmonauts. That's a catchy yeah. name. Guys, wow. they're yeah. fantastic. They're from Glasgow? They're right? from Glasgow. Yeah, they they're pretty real, good. Real Sabbathy sound. It's uh, Kind of big Sabbath with a little <laughs> bit of 80s uh, metal mixed into it. It's it's pretty cool. And uh, we'll be going on next. And then we got a got a band out of uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. An hour late. Uh, they're actually pretty pretty big, but uh, they uh, they're gonna come play for us. And and their family. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. my uncle yeah. was a Who never knew this all along. This yeah. is yeah. and this is the first time I've heard any of this. And I've been with you guys for about six months now. So and I've never heard uh -oh. anything about this. So. Uh -oh. <laughs> I was wondering how you guys, you know, how they were they were gonna play with us and stuff. I didn't know the connection there. How you even knew them when I saw that they were in Chattanooga? I, I don't even know how anybody yeah, well, here. Been, yeah, I talked to them on and off. Right. I didn't know really, how you. I didn't know yeah, how you put that together. Nothing but, ever materialized. He's like, yeah, man. My, you know, my uncle plays in that band and stuff. But they're really good, and I mean, they're doing yeah. really well, and and I think they're going on a tour as well. So they're passing through here. So mm -hmm. it just happens to be the the right time, you know, for them to play with us. So. Yeah. Uh, Spillway, the June one that you, uh, the one that you got us down there. And then uh, we're playing at uh, the Hump Fest. It is um, it is in Russellville, Kentucky. Um, let's see, it is June. Sunday. It's June. It's on a Sunday, and 25th, it is June twenty fifth. Right. And we'll be playing there uh, two p.m. And they'll actually have a good lineup too. And the uh, proceeds go to uh, homeless veterans. Um, for that, for that uh, festival and everything, so we're excited about that. Well, we're uh, going to be going into the studio here uh, pretty soon to record with uh, David Barrick. Yeah, uh, David Barrick is like the master recording the guy, guru, uh, the guy around right right here. He yes. that, yeah. He's out of Glasgow. He's he's kind of hard to get a hold of, but uh, yeah, got a hold of him. So we're going to go in the studio for two days and uh, try to lay down a five, six track EP. These guys have been playing this music together as an instrumental band. Uh, three piece for probably I know he's been with them probably a year and a half now. Oh, um, three and then him. yeah, since like December yeah. 2015. So like, they've yeah, and they've been together for like been two been jamming for about yeah, yeah. Years. coming yeah. up on a decade. So they <laughs> since they've been was in yeah. diapers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So these these songs yeah these songs have like deep roots and they've been piecing them together and, and playing them and putting them together and jamming on them weekly for almost a decade and then he came in a year and a half ago. Uh, to, to create a three piece and, they, and he's been right there. they've had a lot of time to get this music really tight and, and to really shape these songs and then I came along uh, about six months ago and just you know they had 15 songs ready to go and I just started writing on them and just you know working because I mean I came in and was just kind of you know pretty washed up I hadn't done anything in probably about two years and uh, just you know I hadn't done anything with music and then you know, I just decided to, to start looking into it and seeing what I could find, and then, you know, bam, I found these guys and, and got with them and everything, and it just took off really quick and everything, and I think that's just because of the musicianship with all of them in the band. Um, they're really polished really well, and I came in, and I just really was blown away at how, how good these guys sounded and how tight they were, and it just really elevated me and made me work that much harder it tried to develop some, some vocal stuff that, that I hadn't done before and it made me really get on the, the pen and paper and start writing and just <clears throat> and just pushing through, you know, and so uh, it's, it's coming together really quick and, and everything, so, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with it and, and where we're at with it and where the music's going. I know they've already had these songs put together, so what will really be interesting to see is, is, uh, is once we start writing new stuff together and seeing how where it goes. I feel like the, the music that we're putting together as a whole, it's different. It stands out on its own. I don't want to sound like everybody else. You know, yeah. I don't want to sound like Metallica. I don't want to sound like you know, bands are already out there. It's it's rock and roll, but it's got a different feel to it. 
It's got the blues <coughs> edge to it. It's got the funk edge to it. Well, it does definitely have like it's it's like transcending through like the seventies up through the eighties into now. It's it definitely has it definitely has that that feel with a lot of funk and uh, bits and pieces from things that each one of them have uh, have taken from from their generation or whatever. Then it's all infused in this music. So I know he has a lot of influences. Philip does from from some of the people that he grew up with in the eighties. Some of the guitarists and things like that, and then you know, and then Ian. He has uh, some of the drum techniques and styles too that he's, a lot of people that have listened to him um, that I've showed and stuff, they can really pick up on his technique and they're like, man, he has a really finessed old school style, vintage style playing, you know, technique and, and <laughs> yeah. stuff. So it's really, it's really, yeah, he's, yeah, he's it's man. really cool. So, uh, he has you know, no, and then has of no course, ceiling. Brian's, no ceiling. Brian's bringing like some really good, like just straight up hip hop, just drum and bass, yeah. just <laughs> some really good bass licks, man. I, so uh, I try to like, I don't know, like, I'm really into like a lot of like West Coast hip hop, so like I try to kind of model my bass sound off of like old like Dr. Dre stuff. Yeah. I know it's not like super conventional, but I just like that really like deep, fat kind of bass sound that you get off of that. Yeah. So you can hear it coming yeah, out and yeah. stuff. In the drum and bass section, it's really, it really gets it going and gets a really good groove going and stuff. I would be remiss if I didn't do a shout out to the guys from Bridge to Grace. Bridge Justin, to Grace! Woo! Justin, Woo! David, yeah. and Alex, yeah. Christian. Thank you guys so much for your professionalism and being open about showing somebody that needs some uh, needed some direction. You guys showed us how yeah. to do things the yes. right way. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool playing with you guys. Yeah, exactly. Thank, really, well. really great guys, David Garcia, everybody. Thanks for thanks for helping us along and just kind of uh, being really good. We to will us. see y'all again. Yeah, absolutely. Are there any specific bands that you guys would like to tour with one day? Oh, um, I mean, like. Blackstone Cherry, yeah, Clutch, be cool. that would be, uh, yeah. those two would be, be. I feel like we identify with Clutch out of, you know, more than anybody. Here? They're, They're from, from Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, Maryland. Oh, so yeah. I know he loves Clutch. Clutch favorite band, probably Clutch. Yeah, probably. Philip. Have to go with that. Philip, we got. Uh, dude, I, I tell you who I'd really like to play with is uh, J.K. Lee and the Dra Red Dragon Cartel, man. That would yeah. be, that would be slick. <laughs> yeah, cool, that. I, it basically oh, really doesn't say. matter where, where, where. Willing to go be road dogs, just wherever it takes. Yeah. I guess it's part about compatibility too. You know, I mean, in some some way or another, you have to kind of be compatible in some way. You know, it doesn't have to be spot on with another band, but it does need to be kind of in line with that. What would you say is a good band to influence you, like when you're mm -hmm. writing music? Well, I could get the same answer. <coughs> the same same answer thing? Plus, yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, though, it's it's I, I go back to the roots. Uh, I know for myself, <laughs> growing up. Uh, playing guitar. Believe it or not, Judas Priest was was one of my huge influences. This guy over here never knew who they were, didn't have a, didn't well, have a clue. Well, I've heard of them, yeah. but I, yeah. just, I never really got in. I never Until I showed him you know, some of their stuff, some of their old stuff, and he's just like, oh my god. They're, yeah, but it's just that uh, that, that riff-based, uh, that riff-based um, but basically the guys that come there wearing yeah. fucking leather and studs yeah. and, and they're fist bumping, you know, and straight up wearing chains and biker, uh, biker, you know, swinging not, chains. And, it's that, when you but listen they, to their music and you, and you feel that, you feel that riffage that they're pounding and it just makes you want to pick up a guitar and play. Yeah. And then, of course, growing up in the 80s listening to Doc and, and uh, actually one of my favorite heroes is uh, Neil Sean from Journey. Guy just is a phenomenal player. I, I love the way he bends bends the notes and makes that guitar act like it's talking and so I try to I try to play with that sort of thing. I don't want to noodle, I don't want to be super fast, so I just try to do the best I can and, and, and make sure that it stands out so if somebody hears something they're like, hey that, that's kinda of cool, not like Doo -doo 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 -doo. Right, like in yeah, today's yeah. time I think it's important as far as marketing, you know, a band that you need to kinda of be able to stand out apart from from, you know, the melting pot of, of sound that's going on. You need you know, if you're going to elevate yourself, and you know, and try to try to do something with it, and, and you know, and, and be able to get yourself in position where you can do what you love the most, and be able to do it, uh, you know, and be able to, you know, progress with it, and be able to have people receive it and, and everything, and do it as a full-time job. You know, you got to really get that sound out there that stands apart from from everyone else. I mean, I mean yeah, it's definitely different. You don't hear it. <coughs> nice. Yeah, I think people. You know, get, it's very catchy. Yeah, people get caught up in like trying to shred and. All these effects on their instruments that musicianship yeah. kind of dies in the process, and absolutely just kind of trying to bring it back a little bit, you know. Just yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. The more different you it's are, like, the easier it is to stand out. Yeah, I, I like that too because it's like a lost art, you know, of just of just yeah. getting down to it, you know. Yeah. Like our music's not it's not layered with any, you know, it's just raw. I think you know, like 
from my point of view, like seeing you guys up there, like seeing you guys enjoy it, like that made me enjoy it a little more too. You know? Yeah. We can see that you guys are in love with it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's a good point too. When people see that you're, you know, that you're, you're all having a good time together, you know. Kind of gravitate towards that. Yeah, absolutely. They don't really pay attention to the things that are working in the background that maybe we're overanalyzing. You know, mm -hmm. these people just see us having a good time and they see that, you know, they just, and she's right because like I pick up on all that. When I went to Salt Periphery, I see these guys, these, they have three guitar players and they just, they just slowly through the show d during every song they just come to each other across the stage they like just they mess with each other when they're playing they reach across and just do that. shit with yeah. each other yeah. and they yeah. you know and they're playing the most intricate stuff that you could imagine is polyrhythmic stuff and they're just you know they're all they just come across each other in the middle of like the most serious stuff they're playing and they're just pinching each other messing around just elbowing each other laughing talk like whispering stuff to each other and they're just having a great time and you just see like the kids in them just having fun yeah. well, well well, I put, flyer, right? I put some flyers up yeah. here at the Merton Music Stores, and uh, oh, cool. yeah, and luckily he, he called me, hey, dude. He, <laughs> oh, is that, is that how I sound? Yeah, that's how man. <laughs> oh, hey, dude. Is that it? All so, right. uh, but uh, after talking on the phone, he was like, yeah, I'll come out and see you. And like he said, he came out and saw us, and I could see it on his face, you know, within five minutes. He's like, yeah, there's something here. He did a, just a phenomenal job on Second Chance, and it was just him singing. I was like... Dude, that's I, I was like I know he can sing, and so he's uh, he's slowly gotten his voice into fighting shape, and now he can flat knock it out. And it's you know when you watch him on stage, he's up there bouncing around, having a good time, and it's like that's all you can ever ask. You know? and as hard as it is to get a singer, it's equally hard to get somebody that can play bass. And I just happened to not, and I knew Brian because uh, he's a former student of mine. I'm still a math teacher at uh, middle oh. school here in. Uh, Bowling Green, and he's a former student. Is that a formal shout out, or is that just kind of under the right? Okay, no, I'm just fixing it. <laughs> I didn't know if he was giving a shout out to the Warren East Raiders or anything, you know. But, uh, Dude, but th these, he's a former student of mine too. So, uh, <laughs> all right, yeah, I am old man. He's, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Brian I just I have old mom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he is father. All right, so, uh, I saw where he was getting. Uh, he's getting married. Sorry, ladies, you can't have him. He's already married. But I saw where he was getting married on. Uh, on Facebook, and uh, and I remembered that he played guitar when he was uh, when he was uh, in high school, and so I just I sent him a message. I said, "Hey man, you still play guitar?" And he's like, "Well, yeah, kind of. I had you know in a long time." I said, "Man, would you be interested to play in bass?" And he's like, "Well, yeah, I guess." So he came in here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how exactly yeah, how he yeah, said it. Yeah, like, no, yeah, I guess. That's how he said it. I don't know, <laughs> so, maybe. We come up here see. and uh, Ian and I, we just we just put one of our songs on and started throwing. Five minutes, man. He was he was in the pocket throwing down, and I was like, hell yes, that's we got our man. I can remember when this guy was uh, a seventh grader, seventh grade, seventh grade back to yeah. middle school, and he came in, and I remember seeing him in my classroom, little short stringy hair thing, and yeah, you know, hair down to two. Oh, dang, yeah. man, no, I'm like, uh, string of hair down here. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and of course, didn't say didn't say anything, man. Just was quiet as a church mouse, and uh, tried to you know just tried to talk to him and get him to, to talk about stuff. And then found out that he uh, he liked drums, and I was like, dude, would you like to play some drums with me? And he said, first time I'd ever seen him, you know. I was like, okay, you sure I got your good drums. <laughs> so I brought that drum set, I brought it to school, and stuffed it in uh, stuffed it in one of the closets along with my amp and my guitar. And so on a Friday afternoon after school was out, brought out the drums, brought out the guitar, and full Jack Black, and we just and we just we just threw down full Jack Black, dude. Oh yeah, yeah, that's awesome. yeah it, was, it was like school. It was the school of rock thing going on, that's except awesome. just two people. Yeah. And it's so funny because we're in there just throwing. It didn't take us long to get going, and we're throwing down. And other teachers and the principal, they're coming down to the. They're, they're looking in the. Going, What's going on in there? You know, and <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. And, and we we started doing that man every Friday, and it got to be. It got to be a ritual thing, and then we'd have people stop by and, and want to watch, and then we'd have st people want to stop by and join in. You know, hey man, can I play with you guys? And so, mm -hmm. you know, we bring somebody in. We build it; they will come. Oh. Yeah, and it, it just it was really cool, and that's that's the kind of thing that you know the friendship we've been doing that. Gosh, we've been doing that for close to what a decade 2008, now. Two thousand eight, yeah, two thousand nine. Two thousand eight, two thousand nine. So it's like when we play. It's it's like they it's like they talk about you, you have a sixth sense of when you know somebody's going to do something. I don't have to say anything to them. I <laughs> the chemistry is there. Yeah, right? for sure, and that's that's huge. And I you know I knew that about them when he was telling me. Anyways, the, they're they're coming up and how they they form their relationship. So 
and he Brian's been with them long and enough too. That too. He he yeah. sensed it all too. So I mean, they've all that's that's very uh, that's very valuable. The fact that you come into something and and you know you're the outsider, but you come in and you know these guys have been playing for a long time together, and that's hard to find nowadays. Like a lot of times, you're just coming into ground floor, and these people are getting together, and it's just. You know, it always takes a lot of time to get going, and it's like a couple of years later, you know, you're still, these guys already kind of had everything fast forwarded, and, and, and uh, you know, as far as what they were doing, and so it's that's really good. Favorite drinks? <coughs> Alcohol drinks. Alcohol drinks. Uh, I don't drink. Uh, uh, he, he doesn't endorse Bud Light or anything, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, he doesn't mind uh, taking a can of the every once in a while. Uh, uh, what do you What are you digging I don't, right I don't now? I do a whole lot of beer. The only thing close to beer is like red apple ale. Yeah, I'm more of a whiskey guy. I yeah, you, I, I do like uh, I like Land Shark, uh, the Jimmy Buffett uh, beer. Land Shark, those things are awesome. They pack about a, about a beer and a half's worth of punch. Yeah, and then actually, funny thing is too, when you step on one of the, the pop tops with your flip flop, it really don't blow it out. You know, it's actually uh, it's like blowout safe. You know, is what I've heard. I don't know. I haven't done it yet. But it's because it's Jimmy Buffett. You know, I don't know man. yeah, it's a reference. Jimmy, I, I, don't, I mean, Jimmy Buffett. Come on, you know, uh, Margaritaville. I mean, he stepped on a pop top. He blew out his flip flop, uh, right? Yeah. I'm not well, this he, oh, his come. Uh, all right. Big, well, we'll try again big, later. Big, Maybe big, next time. Big. Maybe on the next episode, we'll go into that. But, uh, but yeah. So, what, what, what do you got for a drink, man? Uh, Brian? Uh, um, you are I mean, I'm not a not a super big drinker. Um, I had this other buddy Ryan, and like usually whenever we go to uh, Bella Mushroom or something, we get this mm -hmm. beer that's called Sweet Baby Jesus. It's yeah. this craft beer. It's like a chocolate peanut butter. Tasting beer is like really dark. Yeah, it's, it's around here. Yeah. yeah, definitely baptized in the hops on that. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I don't know, man. I'd have to say my drink's probably absinthe. Uh, you know, I'm really, uh, really sad for psychedelic, you know. No, no. <laughs> But uh, no, I like uh, I like the uh, Vince, uh, actually Vince favorite is whatever is within reach. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, whatever's on the table. Uh, yeah. Favorite southern food. Oh, I guess fried chicken. I don't know. Probably fried chicken. Um, Waffles? I mean, we have to do a Mine goes a little bit more southern yeah. than that. Dude, I love gumbo. Anything that's by you or Cajun. I can tear down some gumbo. Yeah. Absolutely. Really? I think I'm going to say either barbecue or ribs. <laughs> we went to, <coughs> before Ben was in the band, uh, the three of us went on a road trip to Memphis. We actually oh, saw Clutch. Yes. And a couple other yeah. bands, but yeah. you know Memphis is obviously famous for their barbecue. So we went to this Charlie, place, Charlie Burgos Rendezvous. Yes, this yeah. damn Rendezvous. Yeah. Oh my god! It's like twenty dollars a plate, but it is totally worth it for the experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's a charcoal you know, like like ribs food still like. like oh, no. It's it's just yeah. It's like they're delicious. <laughs> you, you stop like I want more. Yeah, that made the trip. Yeah, that made the trip. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad y'all enjoyed that trip without me. Oh, I didn't know you did. It sounded like, like a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. Should have had a flyer sooner, dude. Yeah. 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 My food, I don't know. I'll just eat anything and everything. <laughs> I mean, whatever's within reach. Yeah, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty easy to please, you know. I mean, I just, uh, just go with it, man. Whatever you got, it's good for me, man. So, you know. <laughs> I just get along like that, man. You know, it's oh, kind of a rambler. Did that, like that. Did that come on, come on, best best yeah. pizza in Bowling Green. Come on, uh, best best pizza in Bowling Green. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, dude, he's he's put me on the spot here. No, no, uh, he's a sucker for the Minute Mart. Uh, Minute Mart. Oh, we talking about the Godfather's, Godfather's yeah, pizza? Best pizza in Bowling Green. Yeah. I don't know. That's a that's a bold statement, but I mean, dude, I, man, we we just like uh, one night for a chain. I mean, for making decent. chain pizza. Man. It's okay. decent. I was like, dude, when he when he said he's like. Dude, I'm feeling pizza, and I'm like, what do you want to do? He goes, I know what to do. So we go to Minute Mart. We go Godfather's. to Minute Mart, we get the Godfather. Godfather's pizza is pretty good, man, if you've ever it's had it from Minute Mart. Yeah. I'd rather eat that than Domino's or Pizza Hut or any really? of that stuff or Papa John's. Uh, I don't know. I, I just, that I, stuff. I, I don't well, know. We, we, oh, took yeah. it back. we took it back to his house, and it, it, it we laid waste to it. It didn't Yeah, no, long. it didn't. Well, I mean, you long. eat two to my one, so, you know, oh, oh, I've, I've got to kind of get in there and get it. Yeah, get in there while I can. So, but yeah. How would you call Crosspick in the name of the band? Well, we had, like, a list of like what like 50 names or something we basically just sat down and kind of like debated you know different names we actually said blind dog locomotive originally it was but a, then i was like why don't we just take the dog out? <laughs> <laughs> 
It's, it was more of blind looking money. I know for me, when I was trying to come up with the names, I was just trying to put together anything that didn't sound associated with one another. Just something that was just completely different. Just because yeah. uh, I, I don't want to be known as the, the blah blahs. You know, you want that name to kind of stand out. And I really feel like it does. Uh, our logo, uh, I've got a friend of mine named Nick Jones. <coughs> Nick, and he, uh, Nick he's, Jones. And man, he's done a fantastic job with our logo. <laughs> Uh, he's captured the spirit of what uh, what we wanted to have. It's like when we play, we want to feel kind of unbridled. We want to kind of kick you in the face, and you go, "Shh, what was that?" You know. And so that's kind of the, the, the behind the name. It feels like our music's just trailing right along, getting ready to run off the tracks. So feels like, like the right. First I mean, time. Yeah. it's like, so like it's a, really good. the force of a train, but it's like you know, unpredictable, yeah. blind looking. Like yeah, that. we really analyzed it too, <laughs> like that. We broke it down and kind of were sitting there. It was like. You know, we really need to delve into this and kind of like analyze it. Like we don't, we want something that's going to be a good marketing brand, but also something that rings true for like our music and, and everything. Yeah, it's pretty. And cool. it's like I, I want to say something. Uh, Tommy Star, uh, D93. Yes. Now. Thank Big you, Tommy, <laughs> so much for that. Tommy Star. And uh, we'll thanks, be, bud. We'll be getting back with you uh, on the air again. When we get our David Berry produced EP. That's right. Then we will give it to you personally, and you can share it. And then uh, also Jennifer will get it. Uh, she's going to be one of the first ones on the list too, because we really got to give her a shout out at Blood Rock Absolutely. Media. Uh, yes. And for Jennifer Thank you so picking much here, for coming here, yeah, coming out to interview us, coming a long way to uh, just to come down and talk with us and hang out and everything. So she's doing a lot of good work and uh, got free pot. Yeah, and we got yeah. Uh, the band mother has uh, produced a uh, wonderful uh, L.A. Kate. Yeah, oh, uh, let me it bring it in. Bro. Yeah, we'll bring it in, in here. Uh, this looks like a fifth grade Ooh. science project. You know, I'm waiting for the, the lava to erupt, but <laughs> not like a science. Cake. Yeah, but uh, but this is a cake. I don't know. This is uh, it's called an ALA one cake. It kind of oh kind of, sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never had one. He's, like, oh, no. He's never had. No, that. I've like, I've always heard about those. But yeah, it looks pretty good. So, it's the bomb. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, so well, I'm excited. Knows, yeah. knows. <laughs> Definitely need to uh, break some bread here after a while. But, uh, one more. Yeah. I've got one more person I need to thank. Okay. Ricky right. so Hodge. Ricky Hodge. Yeah. Ricky Hodge. Thank exact. you so much for all your help. Uh, with See, the, if I wouldn't have helped you on that. Then, yeah, if I wouldn't have helped you catch Appreciate that, it, then you would have gave man. the wrong guy the shout out. <laughs> and then you would have gave like, the credit to the guy. What was he doing? What did I do? Ricky Hodge. Yeah. I another one, sorry. <laughs> Ricky Hodge led us to another guy that led us to a guy that got us in, got us some FaceTime with David Barry. Yeah. And that's who we've been really wanting to seek out to get our first EP recorded. Uh, we've heard he's done a lot of great things uh, with a lot of bands uh, <laughs> that are in the big time and then some of the bands that are just coming up. So he's done a lot of great work, and so we thank him for that. Shout out to Kim, his wife, for yeah. being awesome. Yes. Yeah. Driving me to Clarksville because yeah. I just don't have gas money. Yeah. <laughs> Making the cave. Yeah. For, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for providing the, the man cave essentials here. Right. Uh, you know, so it being cool. Uh, definitely uh, providing uh, some some uh, munchies and stuff like that. And yes. definitely keeping the beer stocked in the refrigerator. All these things. Someone's got to do the hard Well, something's got to fuel the creativity here. You know, we might as well have cake and beer and, and things of that nature. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, for sure. You guys want to say anything to the fans out there? Hey, just uh, uh, we've got some. Hey, low. Hey, shit. Uh, let me say something. Keep real watching. Quick. Uh, keep watching our Facebook page. Uh, we'll have everything on there about all the shows that's coming up. Uh -huh. uh, definitely mark your calendars for June third, <laughs> Saturday at the Spill. Uh, you want to be there for that. Um, Hump Fest. Hump Fest, June 25th down in uh, Russellville. Hump uh, Fest, bring your we'll have, a, we'll have a date in May pretty soon at the uh, at Tid Balls. Just keep your eyes peeled for that. All you gotta do is check the Facebook page. Uh, you know, uh, I gotta give my wife a shout out. Cat, I love you. You've always supported me with my music, so I gotta give you that and everything. So. Shout out to my wife, Sierra. Yeah, come on, man. You don't want to end up in the doghouse tonight. <laughs> I don't know, man. We don't have to have too many shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Blood Rock Media for sure, and Jennifer for uh, for, yeah, for doing right. this for us yeah, and being a part right. of this. We're really looking forward to you know working with you guys in the future and uh, you know just trying to help each other elevate you know uh, what we're trying to do. You know, so yeah. definitely, absolutely. Thanks Blind so locomotive, That's right. check Thank us you. out. Thank you for talking with me. This train's coming right Great. at you. Talking with you all. Fun, yeah. All right. Uh, it's Jennifer again with Blood Rock Media and Blind Locomotive. Check it out. All right. Yeah. Woo.